Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is going to be how to make your first SketchUp 3D model from a basic 2D floor plan, complete with textures and 3D modeling in just a few minutes. Okay, so this is a pretty good um, introduction to SketchUp if this is your first video and you just want to use the free online 3D modeling software SketchUp to create a basic layout, then you're in the perfect place to start. A lot of tutorial videos want to take you through like understanding how it works and what extrusion is and how to use the measurement tool. And I think you came looking for SketchUp because there is something you actually want to model. And so I'm going to get you modeling as soon as possible. And uh, then we can start talking more in depth about the various tools and the way it works in future videos. So for example, let's say you have a basic hand-drawn rough uh, footprint of a room. This is one that I kind of threw up of a bedroom in my house. And you can see it's very rough, it's hand-drawn, and anyone can put something together like this with a tape measure in just a few minutes. Um, and so today we're going to take a look at how to get that into three dimensions. So let's start modeling. The first thing in SketchUp is create your outline or your footprint. So this is a standard practice anytime you're doing a room or a house. And things will get a little different if you're here specifically for like woodworking or fine tuning modeling. But in general, always start with a container that's large enough for your whole uh, model. So in this case, the room is 10 foot by 12 foot. So what we're going to start is in two dimensions. We're going to take uh, the 10 foot by 12 foot rectangle of the room. And all you have to do to do that is select the rectangle tool from the side panel. It's one of SketchUp's default tools. Hit at your origin, which is the point where the three colored lines uh, meet. It's where the three axes that we'll be using in 3D modeling meet. And just click on it, and then with the pencil tool, drag it in a direction where it can use two of the three axes. And it's going to automatically snap to your X dimension and your Y dimension. And if you're using feet and inches, which I am uh, here, you can actually t type in dimensions to make sure that you get the right size. So while I have this rectangle that I'm dragging out here, I'm going to type in 12 and then the single apostrophe, because that's shorthand for feet. And then I'm going to do comma, 10, and then the single apostrophe. And so I'm saying I want 10 feet by 12 feet, and I'll hit enter. And what you'll see is it makes a rectangle in my dimensions just like that. Um, but say you had entered it and you wanted one specific dimension to be the long dimension and the other one to be the short dimension. As long as that's the last thing you defined, you can enter dimensions again and you can change them. So there what I did is I went from 12 comma 10 to 10 comma 12 um, and I didn't have to click on the object or anything. It was the last thing I defined so SketchUp automatically resizes it. And this is actually what I want because I want it to look just like this drawing that I made with the long axis kind of uh, pushing away from us. But So uh, this is cool but it's really just a rectangle and you could have made it in PowerPoint so the really powerful thing about SketchUp is when you begin modeling three dimensions and here you're going to use push pull, pull. Um, these are going to give you different methods of extrusion extrusion is just a fancy word for making something 3D um, so if you just click on the push pull tool and use the one that just looks like a rectangle getting yanked upward you just click on the rectangle that you just made and you start pulling it, and again, you can pull it, and there will be a uh, little tool in the bottom right showing you how long it's being made. But assuming you have a dimension, like your ceiling height is 9 feet, then you just enter a 9, you enter the single apostrophe, and then you hit enter, and you now have a block that you can use the measuring tape if you want. This block is 12 feet by 10 feet, by nine feet tall, which if we click back real quick to our floor plan, okay, we have nine foot ceiling height, 10 feet by 12 feet, and we just made a 3D model of the outline of that room in a few clicks. So this is obviously a really powerful tool. A few quick notes about navigating SketchUp. Um, if you hold down shift and click the mouse key, that is how you get the hand to pop up in Windows. Um, 
And if you don't hold down shift and you click the mouse key, that's how you get the rotate tool. And anytime if you, you can scroll in and out by scrolling your mouse, um, sorry, I said mouse key, it's the scroll key. Um, so the main ways you're going to get around by navigating are going to be scrolling in and out with the scroll wheel, holding shift to just move around in the plane that you're viewing, and then holding the mouse key to scroll around and rotate without holding shift down um, the scroll wheel is how you'll get uh, that navigation. So um, obviously this room is cool, but we can't see inside. We can't add things to the inside of it. And if you're creating a model, sometimes you do want to actually place furniture and make sure that stuff fits inside. So what you're going to do is grab either like the ceiling and delete it out or grab one of your walls. And all you have to do, you can also use control Z just like pretty much anything in Windows to undo your most recent action. But whenever you highlight a surface, you'll notice it um, changes appearance. So I click on this wall and it gets the uh, like speckled blue all over it telling me what I have selected. And you can just hit delete. And now you can see inside of your hollow room. And don't worry if you um, just want to drop stuff in and model it now and then get that wall back later so that it looks like a completed room again. Um, the easiest way to do that is you can just take like a line and on any of the lines that border that wall, if you draw the line that's already in existence, you just draw the line again, you're saying, okay, now close off any object that that may have been closing. So you get that wall back. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to delete the ceiling in one wall just so we can see inside the room really easily. Um, and we might add those back at the end. So that's a useful tidbit. Now the next thing in our model, we had a door on one side and we had a window on the other side. So let's go ahead and drop that in. Um, and so it's a 32 inch wide door and it's got 80 inch height. And what we're going to see actually one dimension that's missing from here that the window has is how far away from the wall it is. So since it's just roughly drawn in here, um, I'm going to say like a foot and a half, like 18 inches, but that would be a dimension to actually measure if it wasn't just a tutorial. So when you have an object that's in the middle of the room, and actually let's start with the window because I think it's a little bit clear since we do have that dimension. Um, there are a whole bunch of ways to measure out a distance from a wall. But so we have here, it is 30, say 42 inches um, and then it's three feet wide. So in a 10 foot wall, that's actually gonna be right in the middle. <clears throat> and you can see the marks here we have are, uh, it's a 36 inch window. And that doesn't tell us exactly what it is, but because we were given the height and how high off the ground it was separately, we can assume that's height. So let's say we want to go 42 inches from the wall and we want to be on the face. So an important thing when you're drawing a line in SketchUp is to try to get it to snap to, unless you're in um, non-right angle space, which it, you're already at more of an advanced model, but typically you have a wall or a surface that you're trying to connect to and SketchUp is pretty good about snapping to it. So in this case, I want to draw something, just a measuring stick that's 42 inches from this wall. When I see that red line in the text pop up that says on, on face, I know that I'm on the face. So I'm going to go 42 inches from that wall and I'm going to use the double parentheses um, and it's going to draw in a line for me. So we can see there, like, you don't want this line, but you do need to know how far from the wall you are to start modeling the window. So I'm going to draw that line in until I get the window in, then I'll come back and delete the line out. Um, but then this gives us a really useful thing, which is this end point, because now I can go down from that end point and my mouse is automatically snapping to a right angle from it. So you see the dashed blue line, um, which is useful because we want to go at a right angle and uh, we want to go four feet off the ground because that's where the window starts. So what I just did is I did a four foot vertical measuring stick and a three and a half foot horizontal measuring stick to get the corner at which the window starts. So there are a ton of different ways that you can get your starting position. This is my typical one is I just use an X position and a Y position to get the start. And then uh, the end point here, it's another rectangle and it's a three foot by three foot window. So we're gonna do three foot comma three foot, hit enter, 
and now we've got the window in place. And so I'm gonna start by clicking inside that rectangle and deleting it. Um, but we'll come back in a little bit when we're looking at adding textures and we'll see how we can actually make that glass. So it's a solid, but it's transparent inside SketchUp. We'll do that in just a little bit. So uh, you can see here, we got our window. You can see it from both sides, which is really useful. If you were using three dimensional um, walls where obviously a real wall isn't paper thin, um, it's you know four and a half inches uh, minimum you would need to use the extrusion tool as well once you made your rectangle and you would pull it through the surface and that would create a hole through the whole object um, okay so we've got the window in let's go ahead and add the door and then we'll take a look at adding like texture to the surfaces so um, it's a 32 inch wide door 80 inches tall and I think we said we'll just go 18 inches off of the edge so again I'm looking for that red line and the on edge so that it snaps into the right place and I'm going to just type in 18 and then the double parentheses the quotation mark because that's inches and you'll see when you draw a line that's along a line already um, it doesn't look like it shows up initially but if you start going along that line it's going to snap to and it's going to tell you end point and that means actually that line did draw in and you can still grab it um, so even though we could do another rectangle for the door, I'm going to do it with three lines just to show how easy that is. So we go to the end point, which is where the door starts at 18 inches, and it, we want it to be 80 inches tall. So as long as you have the blue line, which means it's going up at a 90 degree, in, in our frame of reference, it could be any color depending on what two you used for the floor. But I'm going to type in 80 and then the inches, and I have the first line. And then I'm going to go along the red red axis to go back in towards the corner. And I'm going to make it 32 inches. And then I'm just going to draw down along the blue line and connect these. And what's cool is because we already had the floor, we drew our three lines, we still have this distinct rectangle, which I can go ahead and delete out. And now we've made our door as well. So in just around 10 minutes, we took a two-dimensional floor plan, learned a brand new 3D modeling software, and made a model of our room. So this is great, um, but if you're making 3D models, especially of houses and, and spaces like interior um, design, an important thing is seeing it as you would actually want to um, model it. So like you would want to see it with a specific floor or a specific color of wall paint. Um, so this brings us to the next really useful thing about SketchUp, which is um, they have a whole bunch of default textures. And then if you really get into this, you can actually import textures as well for more professional looking renders but they really give you a number of great tools so on the right side toolbar if you have it collapsed like this the textures um, are the one that's uh, you click materials and it's probably by default it's gonna put you on home which if this is your first model might not have anything but some basic colors but if you click over to the browse it shows you everything that's in here by default and they really do give you a lot of default things so let's say you have a wood floor you might not have a wood floor that looks exactly like this but they give you enough options that you can get the general idea in and if you're a very beginner to modeling getting pretty close is already a great start so let's say we've got this wood planking floor which looks pretty good um, and then let's go ahead and just do basic colors for two of our walls. I'll grab this light pink because it's, uh, it's in the beginning. Um, and you can see you just get a paint can like you're in a paint program. Um, and it actually responds to light changes as well. You can see while you scroll around. By default, the light is kind of where the viewer is um, out here. And so uh, as you scroll in and out and turn it around, you can kind of see how shifting light hits it as well. Um, changing lighting where it's coming in from is something that you can do, but that's definitely uh, slightly more advanced. So we're not going to do that now. But okay, so let's say you also want, just to shake it up here, let's say um, we want to put some wallpaper in there as well, do like a fancy featured wallpaper wall. Um, you can see you can start mixing textures and really starting to play around with elements of a room. So this is something you might actually do in a kitchen. You might want to do one little wallpaper section. And this is a really great way to test a few different basic designs and see what works. Um, 
So that's that. Now let's say we want this window, because we talked about that before, to be glass and see-through. So uh, I go ahead and draw, just like we talked about, I draw in that window. Um, I drew a line along one side of it to get to be a solid surface again. And now I'm going to go down to the section that says glass and mirrors, and you can see you have all these options of glass. Um, and so I'm just going to pick like a basic one. When they have this two-tone shader, that's telling you that it is uh, partly see-through. And so you can go ahead and select those, and it'll give you a color. So um, it may just look like I changed the color to blue because there's nothing on the other side of it, but you can come around and see actually if we're outside the house and looking into the window, we can play around with the model and we can actually see inside the room. It's just slightly darker because we added glass. Um, so there are a few different colors of glass. There are a few mirror options. So if you're modeling a bathroom, you could actually grab like a mirror um, and it is going to be reflective in SketchUp. It's just, it looks kind of silly on a wall. But that's another useful thing to know. And um, they have exteriors as well. So if this was, let's go ahead and get the ceiling back in here. Um, if Let's say this was a room that had two exterior walls um, and they were brick. Let's go ahead and grab a brick. And we have the ability to make it like, okay, well, you're in this brick. You probably don't have a brick flat roof, but um, for the sake of this model, you can see it, it looks pretty good right there. It already looks like an actual room. Um, so you can play around with finishes and textures and colors as much as you want. And what you can clearly see is you can even make the two sides of an object different textures. So inside that room, you might have wallpaper, and on the outside, you might have brick. Um, so this is just a really uh, quick introduction to a lot of the tools with SketchUp and a lot of the basics of using this 3D modeling platform. It is crazy powerful for something that you can get for free and use on the internet. They give you a ton of free content and you never have to install anything on your personal computer. You can even save the models to an online drive and you own all the content. So SketchUp super useful for 3D modeling. And uh, this is the first video I've done on this sort of content. So if you'd like to see more SketchUp tutorials on the channel, just let me know about in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all new content that comes out from the channel. And I hope you found this useful. Let me know with any specifics that you want to see in the future in the comments. And I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck with your models and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.